Last June, Nagme Abedini said goodbye to her husband Saeed as he set off on a trip. She never imagined that 12 months later she'd be in the middle of a fight for his freedom and his life. Nagme Abedini is living a nightmare. Last July, her husband, American pastor Saeed Abedini, was in Iran to help establish an orphanage when he was arrested by Iranian authorities. Then, in January, he was sentenced to eight years in Iran's infamous Evin prison. His crime? Preaching the gospel. Saeed has endured physical and psychological abuse and has been denied medical treatment. Nagme says at times, the strain over the past 12 months has seemed unbearable for her and her two young children. I was in the edge of extreme depression and anxiety and worry. And I could see that where I was almost being broken, like just I would have <laughs> had to check myself in. But the Lord didn't let me break. The American Center for Law and Justice has been fighting for Saeed's freedom. Nagme believes that through prayer, it will be God, not the government, who will free her husband. Hmm. And please welcome to the 700 Club, Nagme Abedini. It's great to have you here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, first of all, tell us uh, the latest on your husband. Who, has anybody seen him and how is he holding up? Mm -hmm. His uh, family gets to see him every week. So they saw him this week and he was doing okay. He's still, um, he's had some beatings and, and so he's, he still has issues with his um, internal bleeding. He's much better, but uh, there's still pains and we're still hoping to get him treated for his his physical um, pain. Is he in solitary confinement? No, he was in solitary early May, and they were supposed to keep him there for 20 days, but they ended up keeping him for 10 days, and it was a way to break him and have him repent of his faith and deny Christ. And he actually came out of solitary, even though he went in with a lot of pain and bleeding, and he actually came out much better. He had mm -hmm. had an encounter with God, and but um, he still has, he's had a few beatings and he still needs yeah. medical attention. Well, Iran has a new president, President Rouhani. Is this good news at all for your husband or, or will it factor in at all? You know, he, at the same day he was um, elected, there was a, a Christian sentence um, to a few years in prison. I, uh, above Rouhani is the Supreme Leader uh, Khamenei who uh, really controls everything and his mindset, his uh, policy towards Christianity has always been the same, mm. um, that they see it as a national threat, security to their national, um, threat to their national security. And I don't see much of a change. I hope they try to present, um, try to bring more freedom for the Christians and f uh, really cite, but... Um, but right now, you don't think it'll make much I of a difference? I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Mm -hmm. Nagme, you were born in Iran to Muslim parents, mm -hmm. uh, grew up Muslim, um, how did you become a Christian? God's grace. I was always seeking him. Uh, I grew up right when I was very young in Iran, and there was a war, and there was bombs, and people were dying around me. There was a war with Iran and Iraq, and I always, uh, that made me think about who is God, where is he, and I tried to find him through Islam and as, at the young age, eight or nine, and when I came to the States, uh, my brother had a vision of, of, of Christ, and he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And my um, and you were young, right? We were, yeah, we were eight or nine, mm. and and my uh, and Jesus said, you know, and he felt such a strong love, and he when he he saw that vision, he came to me and he told me, and he was a changed person, and so um, so you got saved based on your brother's dream yeah. about Jesus. But it was so we, we're twins, so we're so close. Mm. So uh, I just saw us. he was so shaken, and so I accepted Christ at that age. Talk and about childlike faith. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. been, you know, it's been an amazing journey. My parents thought um, they were very angry. They um, secluded us from friends. We couldn't see any friends. We couldn't go to church. We couldn't have a Bible for uh, most of, um, from nine till I was 18. And they mm -hmm. thought they're going to forget about this. They've just been brainwashed by the West. And I never forgot about him. Mm -hmm. And he's always been in my heart and he's always been directing me and guiding me and uh, even without a Bible or without any fellowship, he's always been there. Well, how did you meet Saeed? Um, soon after September 11th, um, so um, November of 2001, I uh, actually earlier that year in, in summer of 2001, the Lord had really put on my heart to go back to Iran. And I, I purchased the ticket for October of 2001. And in September 11, when the, uh, the attacks happened in New York, 
Uh, everyone said, you, maybe you shouldn't go back. It's dangerous in the Middle East. But I felt the Lord telling me to go back to share the gospel with the Muslims, to be, you know, love on them and share about Christ. And, and when you first saw him, I mean, you'd been praying for a man who wasn't ordinary. No, yes, <laughs> I've been praying. I said, Lord, I don't, I don't care about money. I don't care about status. I want someone who's passionate, sold out to you. And I would have never thought that, I mean, I, I'm so blessed to have Saeed as my husband, but I would have never thought he'd be so passionate. And when I met him, he was just a worshiper and um, such a prayer warrior. And I loved, I just loved his, his passion for Christ. Nagme, what was he doing? Exactly what was he doing when he was arrested last summer? He was working on an orphanage um, that a government approved. He was working with the government to start. Uh, we st we'd started on the orphanage since 2009, and the kids and I had gone back with them in 2011 and stayed for a few months so hoping he, the orphanage would be open. He was open. there under government ap yes. approval. They, were, they had approved it. He was working with them. Yeah. Now, um, you have two young children. How, how are they coping? They, I know they must be missing their dad terribly. Oh, it's, it's been hard. I've... Um, recently, I shared a um, video on my Facebook that shows Jacob crying, saying, Jesus, I love you. Bring daddy home. Mm. And he's just in tears. And um, they sent out balloons and messages to Jesus saying, bring him home. And, you know, like childlike faith, they prayed and then they wake up and they sometimes they wake up. They had a dream and they look around and, and they say, is daddy home yet? And mm. I say, no, we just got to wait. I, I try to speak to them from the Bible about patience. And but you, you believe he will come home? I, I do. I, you know, I've had to, um, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I have, I've had to say, I believe God's going to deliver. But even if he doesn't, he's mm. still a good God. And I've had to really lay it at the altar. I've learned to not control situations or push God for a certain outcome. And just to let go and say, God, you know, you are a good God. You've been so gracious and kind to us during this time. And, and whatever the outcome, I do hope he's going to come home. But whatever the outcome, um, God's still God. And, and you have been so strong for your kids, but you've just been strong in general. You've been on every TV show. You've been in front of Congress. You've been to the UN working tirelessly to, to educate people and to let them know what's happening to your husband. Um, how do you do that? Where do you get the strength? From Christ. I was, a, I was a crumbling mess, and I found a connection to the vine. And the Bible says, you know, when we find that connection, the fruit comes. And I have to say, one of the highlights, it's been a year since I physically held my husband and said goodbye. We said on June 22nd mm -hmm. of 2012, I said a quick goodbye. I said, see you in a few weeks, yeah. you know, never thinking. But I look at the year. The, speaking before the UN, I got to share about Christ. I got to say, Christ. Said is in prison because he believes Jesus Christ died for the sin of humanity. And whoever believes in him can be reconciled to God. I got to say that in front of mm -hmm. 196 countries. And as I, as I was speaking, there was, they were, had he earpieces and it was being translated in their language. And they got to hear. I just, I know um, the Lord has, has given me strength to yeah. fight for my husband, but also he's given me a platform to share about, his, share his gospel where um, others, I, the UN might have never had this straightforward message about the gospel. And, and, you know, they were talking about peace and bringing mm -hmm. world peace. And, and I got to share that th this is the only way. And I, in the end of, of, of the message, I said, and this is the God of peace you're all looking for. And so it's, it's been amazing yeah. to the platform God has given me to fight for my husband, but also really to share the gospel, which is what this world needs. Mm -hmm. Our world is getting darker and darker. And well, you're we such an Christ. inspiration that uh, you can focus on that. And uh, we admire you so much and our prayers are with you. And I know, I know millions around the world are praying for your husband's release, which we pray does come very soon. Amen. Nagme, Thank thanks you. so much for being with us today. Thank you. And to find more about Pastor Saeed and how you can help in the fight for his release, just log on to our website at cbn.com.